is T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. seconds into flight we are feeling the rumble we are seeing 33 out of 33 raptor engines ignited on the super heavy booster booster and ship avionics power and telemetry nominal acquisition of signal corpus christi we're continuing to get good call outs our trajectory Matthew. looking nominal systems looking nominal just amazing to see all 33 lit up once again At this point, we've already passed through max Q, that maximum dynamic pressure, and passing supersonic, so we're now moving faster than the speed of sound, getting those onboard views from the ship cameras. Now, the, the next major milestone is going to be a hot staging maneuver. Again, we're going to be doing that in just about 90 seconds. To do that, we're going to shut down all but the three center Raptor engines on Super Heavy. That'll be our Miko, our most engines cut off. And then the clamps holding the two stages together are going to release. Starship second stage will ignite its engines, the RVACs first, the sea levels right after that. The sea level engines will be splayed or just kind of pointed out at about a 15 degree angle. So if you look close and we get good tracking, you might be able to see those center right after. And so those six engines will push Starship off of the booster. All right, counting down now. We're going to be coming up right at around the three-minute mark on that hot staging maneuver. Again, we'll see the booster engines start to shut down. You'll see all but three lights go out in the middle, and then we'll see the engines ignite on ship, pushing it away, and that will start carrying the ship into space. Booster will start to do its flip Activation and then move into the boost back burn, setting it up for a eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Stage separation. Hot staging confirmed. Boosters now making right, its way signal. back. Yeah. Seeing six engines ignited on ship. Kate, we got a starship on its way to space and a booster on the way back to the Gulf. Oh man, uh, I need a moment to pick my jaw up from the floor because these views are just stunning. Uh, these are live views from Starship. Uh, first stage is currently performing. Ship avionics, power and telemetry nominal. Good there. News informing us that the second stage or the ship, everything looking good, nominal there. First stage is currently performing the boost back burn, expecting that to last about one minute. That boost Ship's back burn... Pressure is nominal. Uh, that boost back burn propels the booster back towards the coast, taking it to a landing in the waters of the Gulf boost of Mexico. Uh, we're uh, only using the super heavy boosters, 13 center engines from here on out. Uh, as whenever they relight, you'll be able to see that in the left bottom corner. Uh, those are the ones that can gimbal. In other words, they move and change direction uh, in order to change the thrust to steer the first stage back to Earth. Wow, these are just incredible views coming to us. Everything is looking good for both the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen or the super heavy booster, as well as on the right-hand side of your screen, that is Starship, or we also refer to that as the ship. Now the boost back burn uh, was the first of two burns required to return it to Earth. 
The next one will be the landing burn, where all 13 center engines will initially ignite and then transition into a three engine burn uh, to help slow it down. Now, just as a reminder of the stage one test objectives, uh, we're looking for controlled ascent, which we have so far, uh, stage separation, which gorgeous, we cruised right through it, uh, as well as on a trajectory. good news there telling us that the path that Starship is on uh, is good. Now, Starship's second stage is still firing its engines, and as you heard, following planned flight path, uh, the ship objectives, we're looking for hot staging, again, cruised right through that. We're looking to demonstrate controlled ascent as well as orbital insertion. Now, the bottom right-hand corner of the screen shows the ship uh, engine graphics, so be sure to keep an eye on those. Yep, Kate, like this is just a, a phenomenal test so far. Super Heavy is performing beautifully today. It's on its return leg of the journey ship continuing to burn its six engines, those larger circles, the Raptor vacuum engines, the inner circles, the uh, Raptor sea level engines. We're ab about 30 seconds away, uh, just under 30 seconds away from the start of the boost back burn. Uh, excuse me, the landing burn on the booster. You can see the grid fins rotating. Those hypersonic grid fins are guiding us through the atmosphere back towards our splashdown site. Again, we're going for a hard uh, for a splashdown, a soft splashdown. So for landing burn, we're going to expect to see the 13 center engines light, rapidly bring down the booster's velocity, and then just the three in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. We're getting a few, a few engines. And acquisition of signal. Let's we'll see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. Um, and to make it that far to demonstrate the controlled re-entry up to that point is pretty darn good. Ship continuing to look nominal with its ascent burn. This burn lasting uh, about six minutes total. And we're expecting that this burn will end uh, just after T plus eight minutes, about a minute from now. So far though, I mean, Congrats to the team. Making it this far is farther than, we, than we've gone Absolutely. on flight two. Just wonderful views and great engine performance Should from the vehicles. So far we've hit controlled ascent. We're in the middle of that right now. We demonstrated the hot staging. Kate, as you said, cruised through that. Uh, we demonstrated controlled entry of the, the booster. Just yeah. dropped a little short of the engine relay, but hey, that's something we can learn for the next one. Yeah. Now that view that we just had moments ago was a live shot of Star Command. There you see it again. This is uh, our mission control center at Starbase, uh, where vehicle operators are standing by. Now the next milestone coming up uh, is in less than a minute. Uh, at that point, ship will, or I'm sorry, it actually it already has. Um, ship engine cut off. There we go. <laughs> Starship's six Raptor engines have successfully shut down. We heard a call out for nominal orbital insertion, which is incredible. Look at these views, Dan. Uh, I'm just completely blown away right now. Uh, what a day. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team. I mean, this this flight pretty much just started, but we're farther than we've ever been before. We've got a Starship not just in space, but on its coast phase into space. Just to recap where we've come, and it's only been nine and a half minutes. How has it only been nine and a half minutes? We left it off right on time at uh, 8.25 a.m. We didn't have to hold at our gate at all. We had 
33 out of 33 Raptor engines open up uh, and light and get us through a nominal ascent. Another successful hot stage. All six engines on the ship propelling us into orbit. We did see a no uh, what looked like a nominal boost back burn. Uh, and then we did make it all the way to the landing burn this time. Didn't light all the engines that we expected, and we did lose the booster. Uh, we'll have to go through the data to figure out exactly what happened, obviously. Um, so we'll be on the lookout for information about that. But, uh, wow, uh, a ship in space. We've got a bunch of, as we said, ambitious objectives ahead of us. Um, over over the next couple of minutes and pretty much over the next hour where we're going to really, we've got the ship in space, we're now going to take advantage of this and try and learn as much as possible about some of the other systems. It sort of leaves a, a trail behind it. Um, there's some of those great views from, uh, from Starlink giving us uh, views of Starship's onboard videos. And so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us, just like we're seeing these videos now, see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. Now this is only the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry, so even though we do have these great visuals now, uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high-speed data during re-entry. Yeah, that's right. And one of the really primary reasons we want to use Starlink is to just gather as much data as possible. It's been said the data is the payload on one of these flights uh, where we're just we're putting this flight hardware in a real flight environment, trying to learn about it as much as possible. Uh, Re-entry is going to be a really critical phase of flight. Uh, we really want to know how the ship's going to perform, especially that heat shield, as we're going through the hypersonic re-entry. So if something were to go wrong during this re-entry, we want as many paths as possible to collect that information, that data, just to, again, just continually feed back uh, into star the Starship program to make each flight more reliable, more successful. Acquisition signal, Mauritius. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Now we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. Now, uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those flaps there. So getting data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going to be critical to eventually bringing Starships back from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps. That's one of the things um, that that enables Starship to help control itself and 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 survive the heat of reentry. Which, like we said before, we're expecting that reentry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those, and oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are Views still... brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. 
I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note, with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities, even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory. So the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would be getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have views through entry, this is incredible. Yeah. Again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat shield tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. Yeah, now this was one of the critical, or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest that Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor here by... The atmosphere is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed. But you want the vehicle to remain stable. You want those heat shield tiles pointed down uh, so they can absorb the heat of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and so that's the purpose that they are serving during the hypersonic phase and then again during the subsonic yeah, phase. Absolutely. So like we said, these views are being provided by uh, a couple Starlink terminals that are, are positioned uh, on Starship itself. As that plasma builds, it, we're hoping that we can bring these views back to you. Uh, but you can see the telemetry there on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, if you watch closely, you can see the speed decelerating. Again, that's the friction um, of the atmosphere resulting in this plasma field, or excuse me, the blanket um, that is uh, potentially blocking the, the Starlink terminals right now. So we'll bring those views back to you if we get them. But right now, for those of you that have recently joined, uh, Starship is currently re-entering Earth's atmosphere.